Hey, fabulous teachers. Happy Sunday. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm so excited to be here with y'all on this lovely Sunday. Um, my name is Kara Wickman and I am the founder of Create Your Balance with Literacy. And um, thank you for everyone who's hopping on and I'm telling about yourself. So I would love to hear what grade you're, teach, you're teaching this year and um, where you're from, what state or what country. And that would be amazing. So um, a couple of housekeeping things before we get started. Um, I live out in the hill country and so my face might freeze on the screen, but my voice will keep going. So don't freak out. It is okay. Um, my Wi-Fi is just a little bit slow. And then anytime during the webinar, whenever you have a question, if you will type your question in and I will try really, really hard to answer your question. Um, and then at the end of the webinar, I'm going to have a Q&A. Hi, Jill. So glad you're here with me. Um, give me a thumbs up if you can hear me, okay? Um, so that way I know I'm, I have audio. <laughs> I'm always worried about that. Um, so anyway, I was saying that um, if you have a question during the webinar, please let me know. And I will try really hard to answer your question. And you guys can ans answer each other as well during the webinar. So I'm so excited to be here today to talk to you all about my exciting Fun, creative activities for November. I can't believe it's gonna be November already on Tuesday. That's crazy, right? Okay, so just to tell you a little bit about me. Um, oh, great, Jennifer, I'm so glad you can hear. Yay, that makes makes my life easier. Um, so I have been teaching for 22 years, and I know a lot of you have heard this before, but I always like to introduce myself because I know we have new teachers in our group all the time. Um, and so I don't want them to feel left out. So um, I've been teaching 22 years. I've taught um, five years in third grade and 17 years in first grade. I am ESL and GT certified. Um, I have been a trainer in my district. I, I teach in Bernie ISD, which is a hill country rural district in the middle of the Texas hill country. Um, and I've given lots of trainings in my district for my fellow teachers on guided reading, reader's workshop, writer's workshop, guided math, um, behavior management. And so I love sharing with teachers. That's one of my passions, not only teaching students, but teaching teachers. And so I love being here with you guys and sharing. Um, this is a picture of my family. I have two daughters, Kennedy and Presley, and I have been blessed to have them both in my first grade class. And it was the best, best years of my life to be able to spend with them. So um, they, they are now in seventh grade and third grade. And then my husband is one of the band directors here in Bernie ISD. And then on the side, I am a flute and piano instructor and I also sing professionally. So I'm very, very busy outside of my teaching world. <laughs> And um, for those of you who don't know, I am I have a TPT store. If you're if you're not familiar with my store, you can check it out after the webinar. I will be uploading this in the Facebook group. This webinar so is free. You can um, download it whenever you want want to. And all the pictures you see have clickable links, so you can click on anything you want. Okay. And then um, I do have a Pinterest account. You can follow me on Pinterest or Instagram. I have a YouTube channel. You can check out. I video my myself teaching and my class a lot. Um, and I also have a blog that you can click on as well. Um, I post lots of things on my blog every week. And then if you're not um, subscribed to my newsletter, I would love for you to subscribe to my newsletter if you can. Um, so I just um, sent out my brand new newsletter this morning. And every Sunday, I send out freebies, bogos, dollar deals, a blog post of the week, YouTube video of the week, upcoming webinar information, a tip of the week, and my first grade lesson plans that you're welcome to look at to see what I'm teaching for the week. So if you want to click on the link later and subscribe to my newsletter, that would be amazing. And then I also have the first five uh, free five first days of launching writers workshop for free. If you click on the link and you subscribe, you get the first five free days free. Uh, well, that's a, that's a mouthful right there um, for launching writers workshop. If you have not let, let yet launched it uh, before, so that's really helpful. And then exciting news, later in November, I will be giving another webinar for December. And I'm so excited about that one. Um, so in, for December, I'm going to be sharing my Jan Brett author study, Christmas Around the World, Celebrations and Traditions and Customs, 
Reindeer, Polar Express, The Grinch, Christmas Math Activities, Letters to Santa, The Nutcracker, and that's just a nut in a nutshell. I have lots more to do, but um, I am so excited to um, offer that for you. So stay tuned for that one later in November. It's probably going to be after Thanksgiving, okay? Okay, so today we're going to be um, talking a little bit about um, units for November. I'm going to give some teacher testimonials that you can look at. I have a classroom reveal that you can t click on. It's a YouTube video, and you you're welcome to look at my classroom. I go into very, very much detail about every little center and uh, part of my nick and cranny of my room, so you know exactly what I have in my room. Um, I will t share with you how I do my unit organization, the materials and supplies needed for November, um, election Day, Veterans Day activities, um, my Tommy DePaula author study that I do, Veterans uh, Thanksgiving activities, Turkey activities, Maps and Globes, Native American thematic unit, Autumn and Scarecrows thematic unit, and then I also have edit editable classroom newsletters if you're interested in checking those out. And then you get a certificate of attendance today if you um, stay with me all the way to the very end. Then you can message me after the uh, webinar is over, and then I can give you a certificate of attendance. And of course, I always like to have a QA and a at the end, okay? So these are the resources that you can win today. Um, you can win, if you're commenting today, you can win the Native American Customs Thematic Unit, or you can win um, Let's Write About Thanksgiving Writing Craftivities. This one um, includes like turkeys, pilgrims, um, scarecrows, Native Americans, um, just like November templates that you can have the kids write on if you're interested. Or you can win this one, the science investigation about um, corn. This is so much fun. It's called That's So Corny. So I'm gonna go into detail about what this is. It's a really, really fun science investigation with corn. And Or you can win the voting in elections with Grace and Teacher and Duck for President. So I'm gonna share with you all of those different resources, okay? So let's um, see later on what those look like. So I um, have exciting news and my store is 20% off. Everything is 20% off from today and tomorrow. So you might wanna check that out. Here's the link to my store right here. And um, I have a lot of great things for Halloween. If you still haven't done anything for Halloween and you wanna check out some Halloween things for tomorrow with your kiddos, I've got a lot of things there that you can check out. So. 20% off today and tomorrow, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and pick my first winner, and we're gonna start with uh, Jennifer Glassby. Jennifer, congratulations, Jennifer. So you can pick one of these um, awesome resources here that you can win for free, and then I'll message it to you after the webinar. Congratulations, Jennifer. All right, so here are some teacher testimonials. I'm not gonna read these to you because you can read them later after you um, upload the, oh, download the webinar later on. Here is my YouTube of my classroom. Just click on the picture and you're good to go. All right, so getting set for November. Now these are just some things that I've done in the past. I'm not the end all be all of, you know, November activities and I know you guys have great activities and ideas as well. So if you wanna comment about some ideas, please do because I wanna learn from you guys too. Um, so units for November I've done before are Autumn and Scarecrows, Thanksgiving, of course, Tommy DePaula. I love doing Tommy DePaula in November. He's got a lot of great stories that fit in with the thematic units. Election Day, which is next Tuesday. Yeah, November the 8th. And then Turkeys, Veterans Day, which is November 11th, and then Maps and Globes, okay? So there's a lot of different things that you can plug in. And I like to I like to teach cross curricular a lot. So a lot of these units you will see that I involve math, writing, reading, poetry, art, science, social studies. They're all together in uh, my my thematic units because I think that the the students they learn better that way and they make better connections. Okay. So materials needed for November are um, let's see. We need construction paper of all colors. So if you um, have construction paper um, that is the long pieces or the short pieces are great, whatever you wanna use for that. And then um, 
writing templates, of course, interactive notebooks. I have one, two, three, four, five. I have five interactive notebooks that I use. I have one for reading, which is my schema. Then I have math, social studies, focus poetry, and science. Okay, those are my five um, notebooks that I use. Um, for mentor texts, I have mentor texts for, I use Thanksgiving, turkeys, autumn, scarecrows, Veterans Day, Elections Day, Native Americans, and then my thematic units that I use for November are Native Americans and Autumn and Scarecrows. Okay, so I usually typically do two weeks for each one and then I switch them out. Okay, another thematic unit that I did last year was Veterans Day. But since Veterans Day is only one day, it's kind of hard for me to squeeze in Veterans Day thematic unit inside of those two. So I typically just do like a couple of days of Veterans Day and then I go on to something else. You also need book boxes with labels if you want to label your book bins so you know exactly where your mentor texts are. Um, and then you need anchor charts, pocket charts, dry erase sleeves for your math games, devices, headphones, and then binder cover pages. I'll share with you how I organize my thematic units, okay? Um, so for Tommy DePaula, these are the, the books that I read. I use The Art Lesson and The Baby Sister, The Popcorn Book, the, my first Thanksgiving, the legend of the paintbrush, the cloud book, the legend of the blue bonnet. Okay, so I have an author center in my room. So every month I switch out my author center and um, I always put pictures of the books on my author center. I have the picture of the author. And so every time I read a book for a reader's workshop or for science or social studies, then I'll show the picture of the author and we'll talk about them and like the style of their writing because every author has a different style. And then some authors have, they do the illustrations and the writing, they do both. Like Tommy DePaula, he does both. So I do an author study every month. And then these are some writing craftivities that I like to do um, with Tommy DePaula. So I read The Legend of the Blue Bonnet and so we talk about beginning, middle, and end and then we write the sentences for beginning, middle, and end, and then they do a craftivity that goes along with the, the blue bonnet. And then for the Indian paintbrush, I do a, again text to self, text to text, text to world, and then we write sentences for each one, and then we do a craftivity along with those. Now you can do any skill with any of these books, okay? Any skill. You can do theme, you can do cause and effect, um, you can do main idea, you can do inferences, any theme. Anything that you want to do in these resources, I have tons of templates. So whatever you want to choose for your um, writing piece for that one side and then do the craftivity on the other side, the possibilities are endless. I just chose these because that's what I was doing at the time in my classroom. But you can do anything you want, which is great. Okay, so then for Autumn, I use these books. And so um, for... For Fridays, I always have a science investigation and experiment. So this coming Friday, I'm going to be doing a leaf experiment investigation. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to take a baggie, a quart size baggie, and we're going to walk around outside on the playground. We're going to collect leaves and we're going to bring them back into the room and then we're going to sort them according to their sizes, shapes, um, attributes. You know, we're going to talk about leaves before we go outside. So I'm going to read some of these books. My favorite one is this one. We're going on a leaf hunt and it's a takeoff of we're going on a bear hunt. So you, if you haven't read this one, it's really cute. Super cute. But any of these leaf books will be awesome to, to read for the students to understand why the leaves change, all about autumn, you know, what kinds of conditions does the weather have to be before the leaves change and so on and so on. So um, red leaf, yellow leaf is really fun. You can also do leaf rubbings if you want to have them bring the leaves in and do a leaf rubbing in their journal. That's what I'm going to do too for them to um, create a leaf rubbing and they love doing that, those kinds of things. Why do leaves change color? Autumn leaves, my leaf book, awesome autumn, the leaf man. They can even create a leaf man, get a piece of construction paper and have them glue the leaves on and create a leaf man. I mean, it's awesome. Fall leaves fall, and then I know it's autumn. So this is another thing you could do. You can have them create a leaf man at the bottom here. You could also have them collect acorns. Now, if you don't have a tree near your school, 
what I typically do is I go outside in my yard and I collect acorns in my yard and then I bring the acorns to school and then I give the kids like two or three acorns that they can glue on their leaf man you know because they like to make the eyes the nose and the mouth so I do that so but if you do have acorns at your school then you're set but you can also make a leaf uh, fall leaf tree so you can take the construction paper pieces and you can um, tear them apart the different um, colors and then you can rip them apart and have them create a fall tree and then they they can write about it on their writing template and it says autumn is unbelievable and so you can have them uh, later on you can click on this picture and it'll take you straight to the resource and um, this is the door that I typically decorate I usually have a parent that decorates my door for me first grade is unbelievable so that's really fun and then this is the, the leaf investigation that I typically do. So, like I said, I give them a baggie and they go outside and they collect their leaves. They can collect as many leaves as they want. Um, so, they, you can talk to them about the simple leaf and the compound leaf. So, the simple leaf um, is a leaf is, that is not divided into parts. So, like right here where my mouse is, here's my vocabulary word. And then the compound leaf is a leaf that is divided and has multiple parts. So then we can, you can sort them as simple or compound. And then you can have a graph and they can graph how many different kinds of leaves do they find on their graph. Um, so this is also a great way for them to learn different vocabulary words such as simple leaf, compound leaf, um, maple leaf, um, Spanish oak, all the different kinds of trees that you might have in your school. Um, pecan tree whatever you have so they have lots of fun with leaves and I can't wait for them to do one on Friday that's gonna be so much fun so then we move on to scarecrows now sometimes you guys like to do scarecrows in October um, I like to do scarecrows in November so I just think that scarecrow scarecrows go along with autumn so well um, so I read a lot of different scarecrow books I like to read the little scarecrow boy the Scarecrow, Scarecrow Magic, Scarecrow Pete, The Barn Dance, The Scarecrow's Dance, The Scarecrow's Hat, and The Lonely Scarecrow. I love all these Scarecrow books. They are so fun. And then you can do a compare and contrast, you know, with the different books. You can um, contrast different characters, different settings, different problems. The, the possibilities are endless. And then you can make a Scarecrow. You can... Um, have them put together a scarecrow and in the resource I have this scarecrow that you can cut out you can cut you can copy on colored paper you can cut them out and then you can have the kids put them together you can also have have them do it by teams if you want to do up table teams and put together the scarecrow um, there's different kinds of scarecrows in the resource so they you can give a different table a different scarecrow that they can put together and then they can write about how they put it together um, so they can write a procedural story first then next last and then they can make their scarecrow topper to go at the top. Um, they can make the hands with the, the construction paper. They can cut apart the construction paper to make the, the hands for the hay. And then the, hand, the feet. Okay. So this is also in my store, in my resource. Um, I have one for Scarecrow Pete. And I have a thematic unit all about scarecrows also. And then for election day, like I said, election day is November the 8th. So next week, we're going to do some Election Day activities. I love to read these three books, Grace for President, Duck for President, and My Teacher for President. So what I typically do is that during Reader's Workshop, I will read one book a day. The first book I read is Duck. I always start with Duck because he's so funny and the kids love the duck. And then from there, I read Grace. And then the last one I read is Teacher. So then we compare each of those books and then the kids are going to vote they're going to vote on their favorite president okay so I have these cards and so each child gets a card and on my pocket chart we vote for which one we like the best if it's teacher or duck or grace and typically either duck or teacher wins not so much grace but duck duck really wins a lot so or you can have them um, vote on post-it notes on a pocket chart or a, an anchor chart you can have them vote duck grace and teacher and then have them put their names underneath the each one and vote that way um, and then i have a craftivity called if i were president i would wish so they can write about being president um, and then they can 
take a vote. So you can give them a voting ballot. And so I have in my resource, it's called Voting in Elections, um, I have a voting ballot. They can check either Duck or Grace or Teacher. You can make a ballot box. Just take a, a shoe box and cover it with paper and then um, decorate it with stars or flags, red, white, and blue stripes and stars. And then there you go. You can have a, a voting um, election voting box. And so they can vote and then they can um, see which one wins. And it's really, really fun. So then you can talk about Veterans Day. So these are some books that I love to read for Veterans Day. My, um, my absolute favorite book for, for all of this is the, um, the Wall. I love The Wall and it's kind of sad, but it really helps the students understand the reality of what is on the wall and why we honor the veterans. And so I love that book. It's by Eve Bunting. If you don't have it, I highly recommend that you get it or look on YouTube and have them listen to The Wall. I love that book. Um, Hero Mom is also really good. And then there's all, all kinds of nonfiction Veterans Day books that you can read. I mean, these are all, all great. The Poppy Lady is great also. And then Veterans in Our Neighborhood. And then what we do is we talk about um, if you were to write a letter to a veteran, what would you say? So we talk about, thank you for serving a country. You're very brave. You're dedicated. Um, you protect us. Thank you for giving up your time and your family to make sure we are free. We love you very much. Thank you so much. And so I give them a bank of words. I give them a veteran. Um, and we talk about the different branches of the government, um, the branches of the military, the, the Air Force, the, the Army, so-and-so. And then they have to use those words in their story. And then they pick out which topper they want to use. They can use the, the Navy, the Marines, the Army, the Air Force, the Coast Guard, whatever they want to use that maybe one of their family members served in the military in the past or right now. And so they want to honor their family by making their topper represent somebody in their family. Or you can have them make a flag. So look up here in the top, you can have them make a flag. This is very easy to do. Just take a piece of red construction paper, cut your white strips, and have them lay the white strips on the construction paper, and you make it long ways, okay? And then get, give them a, a card, a piece of blue square, and they just draw the stars. They can use a white crayon. They can use a silver Sharpie. If they can't draw stars, I just tell them to draw circles. And then you give them um, a pattern of with that they can make of a soldier, um, on the top of the flag and then I just give them like patterns like a sh different shapes like the hat shape they can trace and the body they can trace and I make the patterns on a manila folder and they just trace the patterns and then they color in whatever uniform they want to do and then make the hair they can do the construction paper and cut, cut the strips for the hair you can give them googly eyes so whatever you want to do and then at the bottom of that then they also write a letter and um, thanking the veterans for their service. And then we also have a Veterans Day um, ceremony. And so my kids make these hats. They're very easy to make. There's just a big dome at the top with a white construction paper. The blue band with the blue construction paper, you need two of them to staple together. And then you give them the red strips and they just cut the red strips. They glue them on the top of the white, of the white dome and then the, the, the stars around the band. And then we wear these hats to our Veterans Day ceremony. They are super cute, super cute, okay? So that's what I do a little bit for Veterans Day. Um, and the, the hats will take probably mm, about 30 minutes or so to make. So you kind of want to cut in like in your social studies block, like the day before your ceremony. I usually make them the day before so then they're already ready to go because sometimes you have kids that are absent and then you have to kind of hurry and make them in the morning of before the ceremony or you could always have another kid make the hats for somebody who's absent that's what I do too so just some ideas you can do all right so then going on for turkeys I love doing turkeys turkeys are so much fun there's so many great stories that um, we can read for for turkeys. So Turkey Trouble is my absolute favorite. <laughs> I love Turkey Trouble. So we we talk about inferencing with Turkey Trouble, and um, we make a disguised turkey. And so I'll show you what that looks like in just a minute. 
Um, we read The Great Turkey Race. We read There Was an Old Lady Who Swallowed a Turkey. We read A Turkey for Thanksgiving. And A Plump and Perky Turkey. How to Catch Turkey. Run Turkey Run. And Five Silly Turkeys. Now, I try to pull in some math also. So like during math time, I will read Five Silly Turkeys, or I might read The Great Turkey Race. Something that has um, has them inferencing what what kind of math story is in, their, in the in the story. They have to listen for the math questions. And so what they do is they have a they have their whiteboard. They sit on the carpet, and while I'm reading the story, let's say I'm reading Five Silly Turkeys, they are writing on their white whiteboard. They're writing things about the story that has to do with math. So they could be writing a number bond. They could be writing a number sentence, an equation. They could be drawing tens and ones to represent the number that's in the story. They could be um, writing a number line. They could be doing a countdown. So whatever they think, they're thinking, which is great inferencing. You could tie in inferencing with math, and it's so fee easy and so fun. And then they turn and tell after the story is over and they turn and tell each, each, uh, with each other what they drew on their board. And it's very interesting to see what they come up with. And as I teach more skills, they are starting to make better connections with their math. And so like, for instance, last week we talked about expanded form. And so I read them a story last week, a Halloween story that had, I think it was um, 10 timid ghosts. And so one of the one of the kids was writing an expanded form question um, with ten, and it, so he was using the skills that I had taught them previously on their whiteboard. And it's so much fun to see what they come up with. And this is really good for the GT kids if you have gifted and talented. And um, I tell them no answer is wrong. I mean you are you are free to decide what you think about what you think the story is about math and then you draw it or you write it. So it's really fun and um, they really, really love it. That's one of their favorite parts about math. <laughs> so, And then um, here are the craftivities you could do for turkeys. So we write a, um, we write clues about their disguised turkey. So this goes with turkey trouble. They write clue number one, clue number two, clue number three. And then they make a turkey at the top. So mine was an autumn tree. And so my clue was, I am a plant that grows. I have a lot of colorful leaves. My leaves fall off in the winter. And then for drawing conclusions, then I say, I am an autumn tree. And so what you could do is have them write their um, clues. Then they could ask their partner. They could turn and tell their partner and see if their partner can guess what they are. So then they can make a disguised turkey. And so last year um, when I did this um, craftivity, I had police officers, I had trees, I had um, dogs, I had cats. <laughs> I mean, I had buildings, all these different turkeys that were disguised. And it was fabulous. It was so great because they could disguise them however they wanted. And then they have to write their clues. So it's really good for making inferences also. And then you could write about how to catch a turkey. And then I like making also the, the turkey uh, puppet. You could take a little brown paper bag and then you could have put the face, the eyes, and the beak and the little waddle on there and then glue the feathers at the top of the paper bag and then they write about what they're thankful for on the bag. And so that would be a really fun um, craftivity that you could do while you have your friends giving or you have a turkey day. That, those are really some fun things. So going on to Thanksgiving, um, so you could read Twas the Night Before Thanksgiving, Arthur's Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving Treat, A Turkey for Thanksgiving, Llama Llama Gives Thanks, Thanksgiving is for Giving Thanks, Balloons Over Broadway, which I am going to be creating um, in the next couple of weeks. My goal is to be creating my new resource with Balloons Over Broadway, so I'm very excited about that. Um, you could also read um, Over the River and Through the Woods is really fun for Thanksgiving. Um, and then this is what I also do for inferencing. So we play the, the headbands game. And if you're not familiar with headbands, it's everybody has a, a band on their head and they have a picture. And they ask questions about the picture that's on their head. And they, they can't see what they have on their head. So they're asking, am I a food? Am I an animal? Am I, do I grow? Am I black? Am I brown? Am I red? Um, can you eat me? So they're asking all these different questions and they're trying to infer what they have on their head. So what I did was I created some Thanksgiving pictures and this is free y'all. You can click on it and it, it's on my Google Drive. So you can click on it 
and these little cards you can stick in your headband. And so I have a turkey, Native American, fall leaves, pumpkin pie, crow, corn, squirrel, scarecrow, acorn, pumpkin, and a pilgrim. So then they have to ask questions. And so the rest of the kids, they're sitting on the carpet, and that one child has the headband on their head. They're asking the class, am I a food? And the class can only say yes or no. So if I, am I a food? No. Am I, do I grow? Yes. Okay, so they're asking questions. And so this is a really fun way to do inferencing as well, to teach inferencing. Um, and so I'm gonna be starting this actually on Tuesday. Um, and I, I'm really excited about that. They love playing headbands. Um, so you could also have them make a, a Thanksgiving placemat to take home. I laminate these after they make it. I have a cornucopia that you can make, or you could make them uh, make a fall tree with the the tear the tour, um, tear the construction paper and have them make the fall tree. And then you write about what you're thankful for on the side of the placemat. And then we decorate the border. And I use little squares, and so they have to make a pattern with their their squares. Um, I give them three or four colors, and then they can create the border. And then I laminate them. And then we also have a, a Friendsgiving um, at our school. And so this is what our Friendsgiving looks like. We make these cute little turkey hats, and then you can click on the link on the picture. Just click on the picture. And then we have the turkey hats. We also sit in a circle and we shake the jar of butter. So we make butter. We use heavy whipping cream and so you have to close the lid really tight and they each have a minute to shake the jar. They pass it around they, that each kid gets a minute to shake. And then so I put the girls together and I put the boys together and they each shake the jar. And so then I get give them a piece of bread and I put the butter on the bread and then they eat the bread. And um, then they can use their placemat to eat on or they can take it home and eat on it. And then um, another thing that we've done is we do, uh, we watch the Charlie Brown's Thanksgiving and then they each get a baggie of the, the food that's in the movie, like the popcorn and the pretzels and the jelly beans. Um, so they each get a bag of treats to eat while they watch the movie. So that's another, another fun thing you could do or you could do all of it. You know, we, I think we spent the whole afternoon, um, we have an hour and a half in the afternoon after we get back from our camp schedule and so we do the whole hour and a half at the end of the day full of turkey friendsgiving things and so we just have a lot of fun all right so we're gonna do our second winner um paula laub paula you're my second winner congratulations paula so you can pick out one of those resources so so far it's jennifer and paula that have won all right, congratulations, ladies. So um, I will message it to you after the webinar is over. Okay, so moving on to Native Americans. Um, I do a whole thematic unit on Native Americans. And so um, we talk about the different regions of the United States, about the different tribes, how they, what kind of foods they ate, with the shelter they lived in, how they dressed. Um, and then we, we talk about some of their jewelry that they make. Um, that they still do they still make some jewelry like uh, different things like the bows and arrows they use um, the weapons they use um, so we read uh, the mud pony I love the mud pony um, and then the legend of the blue bonnet and then legend and the Indian paintbrush um, if you lived with the Sioux Indians if you lived with the Cherokee if you lived with the Iroquois they lived with the Hopi and then I'm Sacagawea um, so dif different Native American books that we talk about and then my theme center has pictures of all the different tribes of the United States and all their different shelters that they made, like the Longhouse, the Teepee, the Hogan, the, the Wigwam, the Adobe. So we talk about the different regions and why they made their shelter the way that they did with the weather that corresponded with the region, okay? So like the, the Northwest, the Woodlands, the wigwam had a, a certain shape because of the weather. The chick, the chicky had a certain shape because of the moisture, the the river on the bottom, the moisture, and then the teepee had a certain shape because they had to travel with the teepee. They were nomads and they had to travel. So different things that they have to learn about on their different regions and customs. And then we also talk about maps as well. So I show them the United States map, um, and then we ha we talk about the regions of the United States. So, um, and then um, in the past, I've had them make uh, some different houses, different shelters of the different tribes on a paper plate. So I get those Chinette plates 
and they have to draw a river in the middle of the plate and then I have these little labels that I put on the, the side of the plate. So they make a teepee, they make a wigwam, make an adobe or a hogan and they make the longhouse and then they put the, the houses on the plate and they make a little um, Native American village. So it's really cute. Um, and then that you can also have them make these um, teepees if you want to have a snack for them you can make these um, use ice cream cones and then the pretzels at the top um, with the different um, leaves the sprinkles um, so they can have a cute little snack and then or let's see Jen you're saying I have a question I think you said that you do about two weeks units but you've shown several different units do you do each unit every year or do you alternate year to year? So that's a good question. So yes, I alternate every year. Um, so the two main units that I do for November are um, Native Americans and Ottoman Scarecrows. Um, and so sometimes I might even do one unit in reading and I do the other unit in social studies so that I can double dip. I hope that makes sense. But if you cannot do that, then you can do two weeks on, two weeks off. You could do two weeks science, two weeks social studies. I typically do that a lot because I, I don't like doing, um, I don't like rushing through the unit. I like taking my time and having the kids um, spend more time understanding the skill and not just rush through it. So um, I like doing two weeks of science and two weeks of social studies. Now, these are units that you can choose from. You don't have to do all of these, but these are some that I've done in the past. Um, and by my, my favorite ones, like I said, are the no Native Americans in the autumn. So um, this, this is, I hope that answered your question. Um, <laughs> sorry. I'm trying to talk fast and then look at my phone at the same time. Um, you can have them make an, a Native American village. Now, this is really fun. So you have them make a village out of a box cover, a box lid. So those copy boxes that you get, the Xerox boxes, you save the lids. So they're really good size lids. And then um, you save them, and then they can decorate their lid and make an, a village. Okay? You could have them make the river. And this goes perfectly with maps. It goes perfectly with landforms also. So you could have them make a river. You could have them make mountains, trees, valleys, um, islands, whatever you want them to do. And then they can create like a Hogan. They can create a teepee, whatever you want them to create. If you look up here at the top, this child made a canoe. So he had a um, toilet paper roll and he cut out the middle to make the seat of the canoe. So he put the canoe in the river. That was pretty clever. Um, and so then they made the trees. We collected some leaves outside and then they used the leaves to make their trees. I just gave them, I gave them free reign, but I told them, hey, you have to do this and this and this. But then after you do this, then you can create your own. So I had them cover the bottom of the box first with green paper. And then I had them uh, cover the side of the box, the inside of the box, because I like it having colored on the sides and not like, the, the cardboard showing because I, I don't know I just like that so I had them cover it first and then I gave them free reign I said you have to create your own river you create your own mountains you create your own trees you're gonna make a teepee or a hogan or whatever you want to do and then create your Indian your Native American village so they had a lot of fun doing that so I had a cart that was in my room I had a big cart on the cart I had egg cartons I had toilet paper rolls. I had all different colors of construction paper. Um, I had sticks, little bitty sticks that I had broken up. <clears throat> I had leaves. Um, what else did I have? Um, toothpicks, all different kinds of things that they could use for their village. And so they had such a blast making this. Now it took me a good uh, two weeks to make this. So I would set aside um, maybe a couple of days a week during my social studies time that we could work on our boxes. Um, it doesn't take, it can't, you can't just do it in one day. It'll take you a couple of days at least. It depends on how creative or how much you want them to put into it. If you want to make it simple, you could just have them do it on a plate. Okay. So these are some other Native American things that we did in our room. I've made mobiles before with the Native American, um, people with the with the necklaces and the feathers we wrote about pilgrims and native americans and we made a class um, book of native americans so you could do a class book and they could write about their favorite tribe 
and make a class book and put it in your library. We also do a student book of Native Americans. And so we talk about the Northwestern, the, the Plains, the Northeastern, the North Southeastern, Southwestern, different tribes. And then we color in the map. So this is how I kind of uh, cross-curricular teach like the, the map skills with Native Americans. I kind of combine those together. We talk about the cardinal directions and then they color in the part of the map of the United States where the tribe lived. Um, and then they're, they're coloring the shelter, their food, and then their climate. And then we're writing, um, we're writing about the bodies of water. We're writing about the landforms that are there, the natural resources that are there, and the types of weather. So we're, we're tying in all kinds of different social studies um, standards within the Native American unit. Okay, So this will take us a good two weeks to do. <clears throat> Um, and so it typically takes me two days to do each tribe. Now you don't have to do all the tribes. There's five different tribes. So, but you don't have to do all of them. If you just want to do two or three, that is perfectly fine. You can do your favorite ones. But I like making a book and then they have the whole book full of the, the Native American tribes when we're, we're all finished. And then make a cover um, that says Native American tribes and they have the Native Americans on there. So also with Native Americans, we talk about corn. Um, a lot of the um, tribes liked to grow corn, and so we, we read The Corn is Maze by Aliki. And so then we do a corn investigation. Now, if you have a science fair at your school and you want to do a class science investigation experiment, this is perfect, okay? This is easy. It doesn't take a lot of prep, I promise. So what you do is you take three corn on the cobs. You take three containers. One container has water, one container has soil, and the other container has sand. I put this, I put these containers in my science center so they can go over and observe the corn as it grows, or if it doesn't grow. So they're gonna predict, they're making a hypothesis, they're gonna predict which environment or which natural resource will the corn grow the most and they all say the water which is i mean i'm sorry they all say the soil which is i mean normal because plants grow in soil right well the corn doesn't really grow in the soil and it doesn't grow in the sand it will grow in the water so you can see right here the tupperware that has the water you see the shoots that are coming out of the corn isn't that awesome so when my kids saw that, they were like, oh my gosh, the water, we didn't realize the water would make it grow that fast. We, saw, we thought the soil would make it grow that fast because I water the soil with water. I put water in there and then I water the sand. Um, and so we talk about the different natural resources and which one the, the corn likes to grow in the best. So every day they are recording their data for their corn. So I have this corn book, it's called That's So Corny, and then they have um, 10 different days, there's 10 different days in the book. You don't have to do all 10 days, but you can decide how many days you want to observe the corn. And then they're drawing pictures for each day, and then they're writing sentences, yes it grew, or no it did not grow. And then at the end, you can make, make a drawing conclusions, and you can have a class discussion about why the corn grew in the water and why it didn't grow in the soil or the sand. Maybe it didn't have enough nutrients. Maybe it didn't have enough water. Um, and so it's really, really fun. And it, it's, it's kind of like the um, investigation that you do with the rotting pumpkin. You know, over time you watch how it molds and how it rots. It's kind of the same thing. And some of the corn will turn moldy. But uh, you got to have to figure that out. You have to watch. I told the kids, which one's going to turn moldy? You're going to have to figure that out. So that's really fun. Um, and again, you can click on the picture and it'll take you straight to the resource for that, okay? So for maps and globes, you can read Me on the Map, Mapping Penny's World, Looking at Maps and Globes, um, Follow That Map, There's a Map on My Lap, tons of great stories about maps and globes. And then I have this resource, it's called Let's Get Interactive for Social Studies. It is interactive notebooks and anchor charts. So I have already made all of the anchor charts that are in the resource. I've already made all of those. What you can do is you can 
copy those anchor charts on color printer and then you can either make them into a poster like out of your poster maker or you can put them on your document camera so they can go on your smart board and then they'll you know make it bigger or if you just want to make your own you could put the um, anchor chart on your smart board and put a piece of paper on top of it and then you can trace what I did you can trace your own so that's up to you um, I like to use a lot of post-it notes so that it still makes the um, anchor chart interactive so the kids will write words or they'll draw pictures on their post-it notes and then they come up to the anchor charts and then they post their their facts on the on the anchor chart so we talk about the continents we label the continents we label the oceans we talk about the um, compass rows and then they have their own map of the continents and then they have to label use these labels and cut them out and glue them on the continents then we also talk about map symbols um, so we talk about like how to make a symbol for a road how to make a symbol for a river or a fire station or school and so they have to draw the different symbols in their interactive notebook page and so I shrink these down 80 percent on the copy machine so they can fit in their notebook so again you can click on the pictures here <clears throat> and it'll take you to the resource it's called let's get interactive anchor charts and notebooks for social studies it's got anchor charts for the whole year okay I there it, it includes like um, George Washington Abraham Lincoln Martin Luther King um, let's see a lot of a lot of social studies um, traditions and customs needs and wants um, being a good citizen following rules and laws community helpers all all different kinds of things so you can check that out if you want oh here's some more so I have what is a globe then again they're um, labeling the different parts of the um, of the globe and then here's their compass rows and they are cutting out the directions and they're gluing them on their compass rows for their interactive notebook then when you read in, me on the map you can talk about how the differences between our, our city, our state, our country, and our continent, and then they can write the words inside the circles here so they know that I'm in the middle and that everything goes on around me and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And so that's a really good visual for them to understand that me, I'm first, and then my school, and then my city, and then my state, um, my country, my continent, and so on. So that's really fun for them to do. Um, I also have an anchor chart for landforms. So um, on the maps, you can talk about how you can make a mountains on the maps. You can make rivers on the maps. <clears throat> um, and so we talk about the different kinds of landforms. And I read the story, what is a landform? And I give them this interactive notebook. They lift up the flaps, so they cut out the flower. They lift up the flats, and then on the underside of the flap, they write what it is. Or they can write a sentence about it. And then we make landforms with these paper plates. Now, remember the uh, Native American village that I shared with you with the box lid? If you don't want to do that, if you don't have enough time, you can do it this way with the plate. This is a lot simpler and it doesn't take as long. So you can give them some Play-Doh and then they are creating their landform um, on their plate. They can create a mountain, a river, an island, a plateau, whatever you want them, a plain. And then they take post-it notes and then they label the different parts of the um, landforms with their post-it notes. And then I have this template at the bottom here that they can draw their landforms in the boxes and then they glue it in their social studies notebook. So it's really, really fun. So just some different ideas, guys. You don't have to do all of these things, but just some ideas that um, are really fun for November. And then this is how I organize my thematic units. Um, I do use Google Drive a lot, but you know, if something were to happen to Google Drive and I wouldn't have my resources to fall back on, I want to have a hard copy of my master copies. And so I put everything in a binder and I have it organized by thematic unit or by holiday or by month. I also have these for reading and writing and I also have it for math. So for example, I have a binder for just owls and bats. I have a binder for just famous inventors, for America and presidents, for Earth Day, for weather, for Native Americans. And I put everything inside the binder. Now in the binder, I have um, dividers. So I have a divider for reading, 
for writing, for math and science, for art, for poetry. And then I, I organize all of my um, copies that way. So this is in my store. Also, you can click on it and it'll take you straight to the link here. And you're welcome to check that out. If you need a, a, news, a newsletter template, um, I have these in my store. They're editable. And so you can write your own name on here. You can write your own dates, your own skills for math, social studies, spelling, ELA, and science. And I have these for all the months and holidays. And they're all editable, so you can add your own writing in here if you want. And they're, they're really super cute and easy to, to use. I use these myself every single week. And my parents really love these because they're easy to read and they're not so overwhelming. So you're welcome to check those out and just click on the link for that. And if you want mentor text for any skill or standard that you're looking for, I have you covered also. I have mentor text list for ELA for writing, um, for social studies, for science, and for math, and phonics, okay? So if you click on this link, it's a bundle. But when you go to the bundle, it's separated by different um, subjects. So you can click on just the math or the science or the social studies if you want, if you want to check that out. I also have um, the vocabulary skill cards that go with each skill. So each mentor text also has a vocabulary card that you can display on your pocket chart or you can display on your anchor chart or whatever you have for your standards like your ICANN poster. Um, you can display the skill that they're learning. <clears throat> so I have this whole big bundle full of mentor text if you want to look at it. So it's really, really helpful. And then if you need um, PD credit for today, I'll give you an hour worth, hour's worth of PD credit. So just um, message me after the webinar is over and I will send this to you. Um, via messenger okay I also have other webinars that are for free in my store these are all free you can download them at no cost and so I have webinars for literacy centers writers workshop readers workshop math workshop focus poetry back to school fun September October November December I have all the months okay so you're welcome to look at those and click on any of these pictures and it'll take you straight to the resources, okay? So my third winner today is Jen Tressler Langer. Congratulations, Jen. You're my third winner, okay? And Jen asked a really, really great question about the thematic units. So my three winners today were Paula, Jennifer, and Jen. Okay, so you guys can choose. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna make a post in our Facebook group about the four choices you can choose from again so then you can tell me which ones you would like okay and I think I already answered the questions that were oh in my Facebook group here I think everybody had I don't think I had any questions except for that one question but if you have a, another question and you want to ask please ask later and I will answer your question as soon as I can okay I really appreciate you guys watching today um, I love having you guys um, come on and share with me um, and spend your day with me. So thank you, thank you. If you have any teacher friends that are not in our Facebook group, you can invite them in. I would love to have new members in our group, okay? I hope you guys have a wonderful Halloween tomorrow. Be safe and have fun with your kids. And I will see you next month for Creative Fun for December, all right? I'll see you guys soon. Love you. Bye-bye.